Hey guys, welcome to Reveal Works. I'm gonna share something with you. 22 minutes in this video, I had somebody call me and it just cut off my video. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just like so close to finishing it. And I get the phone call. Um, there you go, things happen. I wanted to um, empower you this morning with something that, first of all, I am talking to myself. And I'm gonna tell you why. About two weeks ago, I began to reason within myself and I began to make certain decisions within myself. And one of them was um, to have a healthy relationship with myself and with those around me, especially with my partner. The very next day, Facebook, as it does for you too, I'm sure, reminds me of a post that I posted a year ago on that day. Guess what it said? Allow yourself to have a healthy relationship. And I thought, that's interesting because that's exactly what I thought yesterday. You see, whatever you think at the intellectual level, you are going to see it. If you think of a specific car, and when I say specific, that means it's defined. You know the type of car, the name, the brand, maybe the year, the color. All of a sudden, you see it pass down the, dry, the, <laughs> the highway. Because thoughts manifest, right? Thoughts create reality. If you allow the reticular activating system to focus on something, meaning you're present when you think, when you make a decision, when you come down with a conclusion and you're present there and you're aware of what you said, that is going to be, you're going to see it somewhere. It's a sign, it's a confirmation. Yes, that's exactly what you need to do. But you see, last year when I posted on my Facebook, now I think to myself, oh, I perhaps have not made any progress. Because if I told myself that, under the assumption that I was telling the people on Facebook, right? I thought I was telling them. No, I was telling it to myself because everything you write down, everything you speak, everything I say here, it's not for you, it's for me. It comes out of, from inside of me. So if it comes from inside of me, it must feed me first. So if I speak negative, I'm going to feed myself negative. If I write negative, I'm going to feed and write uh, and read negative. So this power of from within, so without, as in heaven, so on earth, it's real, it's powerful. Now, that day, I said to myself, well, that's interesting. Hmm, okay. I became aware of what's happening, and I began to think of something else in the same lines. The next day, Facebook again brings me a post from two years ago, and exactly the thoughts that I came down with the day before, they were written down in front of me. And now I began to catch on, and I said, oh my goodness, is it possible that everything that we write down comes back to us? A lot of people write journals, a lot of people do scripting, a lot of people um, imagine things, a lot of people daydream, a lot of people wish for things and they write them down. Until you become emotionally involved with that, it's not part of you. You see, when we allow other people's negative, opi negative opinions of ourselves, when it comes to our body image, we um, get involved emotionally with it. We are affected by it. If we are affected by it, we are allowing that person or someone else to tell us those very things over and over and over again. You see, your brain collects pictures. You think in pictures. According to Dr. Joe Dispenza, we do not see with these physical eyes. We see with the brain. So ask yourself right now, what inner conversations have I imprinted in the brain? What images of my partner telling me that I'm not good enough or I don't look good enough are still alive within me? Because everything is alive within us. It's just a matter of, am I going to resurrect it or bring it to life by becoming aware of it? Or am I going to let it go? Well, you can't let go of something until you replace it with something else. You can't clean your home and say, well, now my house is clean, I'm perfect. No, you've got to, you don't fight with what is, you just bring in a new pattern. You just bring in a new way of thinking. You replace your old way of thinking, which means those thoughts, you replace those thoughts and your thoughts and decisions and ideas are going to create new pictures. Now you must go from the heart. What would I like to hear? What would I like to see? If I was able to see my thoughts on paper and they were written by me a year ago, why can't I just put my thoughts on paper today about the way I would like to look? Instead of giving myself advice and say, I am going to call a doctor, that's you giving yourself advice. You must do this. You should do this. And if you don't do it, the next day you look at your to-do list and you go, you must call the doctor. You must call the doctor. That's a to-do list. That's a command you're giving to yourself. 
Now we give ourselves so many commands, but we don't follow them because we're not involved emotionally with them. So it's obvious that the post that I posted a year ago, I was not emotionally involved with it. I was aware of what I need to do, but I didn't do it. So how do we do things? Well, first of all, we must understand that what we see in here with them, we're going to see in here outside. If I just become aware of what I need to do, oh, I need to have, allow myself to have a healthy relationship. But in my mind, I'm holding images of unhealthy relationships. There is a division. There's a division. I have unhealthy images in the mind, but I say, tell with my mouth, well, yeah, I need to allow myself to have healthy relationships. It's never going to work. Never going to work. If you think of you, I'm not good enough. I'm not, um, I'm not good enough. Or you have those images of you looking in a way you don't want to look and you tell with the mouth, but I would like to look different. There's a division. The image and speech has to be aligned. I know it's a lot of work, but this is the only price you need to pay for success. This is the only price you need to pay for success. If we write things down and we see them, imagine if you see yourself with that ideal body image and you write it down right now, you become one. You take what's in your mind, the vision, and you write the exact same thing down. Write the vision and make it clear. What you see within, write it down. And then keep write, reading it so that picture imprints itself. This is called auto-suggestion, right? Why? Because we think in images. What I think within and what I see within, I am going to always see on the outside. For example, I thought about a purple dress that I bought last year around this time. And guess what? Last night, I came in the living room and I took this mat and I said, I think I want to work out a little bit. I was a little bit stressed and I said, you know, I'm just going to work out a little bit. My mat was next to um, a bag that I took on a trip and in that bag is that purple dress. And I caught it and I seen it and I said, wow, is, I can't believe this. I just thought about the purple dress. It came to my mind and I saw the color of it. And look at me, I am here picking up this map next to the luggage. And in the luggage, there is the purple dress right there. You become aw awoken and you awake when you realize that what you think, there it is. What I say, there it is. Everything is in front of us, depending on what it is we need. If you need an apple, all of a sudden you say, oh, well, there's the apple. But you must want it. And to want something is to give it um, attention, right? But we have the tendency to give attention to things we, ha we have heard negative about ourselves, um, to what we've heard, to, and we give attention to those, which means we resurrect those inner conversations that a friend had with us, or maybe a stranger on the street, or maybe somebody in the gym said something negative, or I said that to myself. And I resurrect those up, and I encounter them. We ask ourselves, why is this person so mean to me? Why are they saying that thing to me? I haven't even done anything to them. No, you have just imagined a conversation. You've resurrected a conversation you had with, a, with someone that put you down. Therefore, you called into your life somebody that had to fulfill that role. They were acting out as that person you were fighting with in the mind or that person that you thought they said something negative to you. Nothing happens by accident. There's no failure. So I want you to understand how real this is. I have tendency to go and look at the negative. And now I am struggling, for example, with some images. I truly, truly, and I don't think I truly, truly, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I truly, truly want to, to destroy them. They're still there because I feel justified in my reaction. But see, that only hurts me. If I feel like I, I demand and I deserve something else and I'm holding on to these reactions to what I have seen, I'm only hurting myself because those are the actions in the person that I have created to begin with. They are not to be blamed for what I have imagined them doing or not doing. They're acting out according to the script that I have written for them. So if you have bad opinions and labels about people, they are going to behave in that way and you're going to say, you know what, my heart wants something different. Yes, but your mind imagines something different. So when I talk about coming into the heart, living from the inside out, loving yourself first, it's referring to you seeing yourself the way you want to be seen. And one thing I want like to bring to you and to me is don't allow anybody to take territory of your mind. Meaning, if you um, right now, for example, um, imagine worst case scenarios or you're imagining people that have hurt you. 
and you see them over and over in your mind. You know what you're doing? You're giving them the power. You're making them alive again. You're making that incident come alive again in them because thoughts travel. People pick up our thoughts. And how do I know that? Because before I even get to a meeting, guess what? I think about certain things. Oh, I would like to have this. I would like to have that. By the time I get there, that person does this and gives me that and says this and says that. This is how specific we are and this is how we create our own reality. When it comes to your body image, you must understand it's the same thing. So if you look past the mirror and you say, oh, I'm not that pretty. Why? Because you're comparing yourself with someone else. Why? Because you're allowing someone else's picture to enter into the territory of your mind. Listen, in the Bible, and I'm not religious, I'm a spiritual scientist, but in the Bible, all there is, it's battles. This king took this territory, this king's territory, this king took that king's territory, and they were taken from each other. They, they were taken or other were stealing from them. Why? It's referring to the mind. If you're allowing strangers in there, women that you compare yourself with, those are strangers. They are coming into your land allowed by you. Why? We're not supposed to allow any woman. We're not supposed to compare ourselves to anyone. This is the territory of my mind. In my kingdom, in my reality, I'm the most beautiful thing. I'm the most attractive human being in my kingdom. Not everybody's going to see me that way. But that's okay. Everything is good, but not everything is for me. So if you think and feel that you are, you are going to attract people that think and feel the same way towards you. We attract what we are. And what are we? Images. We attract in the likeness and images of that which we hold within. So if you don't want people to say negative things about your body image, if you don't want yourself to talk negative about you, you must replace your inner speech. Conversations come to reality. Images come to reality. Why is it that when I travel to Florida, I'm in the car, it's raining, it's 10 o'clock at night, and all of a sudden I have a thought, oh, I wonder if I'm close, I remember those palm trees. All of a sudden, I sit well in my chair, 10 seconds later, I turn the curb and I look and there's those palm trees. I have not followed the road to see where I'm at, but the thought came and there was the picture. There's no coincidences and there's no failure. What you think, there it is. You don't have to wait a long time. So let's allow ourselves to be um, molded and shaped by our own thoughts. We refuse to speak lovingly about ourselves, period. I have a difficult time too. But then I have to remind myself and say, why am I allowing other women to take territory in my mind? Why? Why don't I rise in my kingship? Why don't I rise in my dominion and say, this is my territory. This is my mind. My mind is sacred. My mind is holy. My mind is pure. My mind is only for me. It's all about me. Because if I don't think about me, it's obvious nobody does. And they can say all they can that they do care, but they're not going to care. In the next video, I want to talk to you a little bit about self-love because I think self-love is very, very important. I want to show you how to love yourself. All you have to do is just allow yourself. You have to allow yourself to love yourself. It's a matter of allowing, using the law of non-resistance. But this video is quite long. Remember, I am speaking to myself. So let's go ahead and do some stretches. And remember, I've already done this exercise until somebody actually uh, called. But um, here we are, we're doing stretches again. And I can feel the tightness in my thighs uh, because of the workout that I did. Okay, we are going to work out the thighs and the glutes. This has become one of my faves. Bend the knee, come down, point the toes. We're going to do about 15 of these. And I want you to do them um, to hold your leg tight and control the movement. So here we go. Go up and down. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now we're going to bring it in and out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Very well. I want you to come up. I'm gonna rotate to the other side. Come down. Bend the knee, stretch the top leg, toes pointed down, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Bring the knee in and out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Very good. Okay, I want you to lay on your back. We're going to work the abs. We're gonna pulse it at the top three times, and we are going to do 10 reps. So here we go. One, two, three, one. I want you to comfort yourself. Two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. I want to work the thighs today um, and the glutes. So bring yourself up. You are not going to be able to see my upper body. Um, you are just going to see my lower body. So if you have a chair or you have a hutch or cabinet like I do, it will help you to balance yourself, but not necessarily to put your weight on it. We want to get the best out of the exercise. So what I like to do is bring um, the left leg out, bring the right uh, leg, leg in the back. I'm going to go down three times, come up and stretch and tighten the glutes, okay? I found that if I do it this way, instead of bringing the leg back and bringing it forward, if I do it with my legs already stretched, when I come up and I tighten the glutes, both of my glutes are being worked on, okay? So I love that, okay? So let's just go ahead and do it. Here we go, let's start. One, two, Three, one, tighten the glutes at the top. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, six. One, two, three, seven. Can exchange the leg right leg forward left leg in the back here we go one two three one one two three two one two three three one three four one two three five one three Seven, 
that's all the exercise for today. In um, the next video, I'm going to talk to you about self-love, how you can love yourself. And we're going to talk about inner conversations. Because when it comes to self-love, we're going to talk about you speaking to yourself and you hearing other people talk to you. We're going to talk about power and authority. This is a, a topic that I love to talk about in my <clears throat> in my coaching program and my business programs. Okay, so this is going to be really, really great. I want you to come back and watch this video. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye now.